Hi, my name is Vet. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to do a really cool recycle project using a water bottle. There are tons of them everywhere, so you have unlimited supplies. The first thing you want to do, of course, obviously, is to drink all the water. Uh, for germ purposes, I usually squirt a little bleach, or if you don't want any chemical that strong, you can also use a little vinegar, a little diluted vinegar, squirt it in there, rinse it around, let it dry, and then you're good to go. The first thing you want to do is, after you've washed it out, is to cut the paper. Sometimes you can just peel it off with your hand, and if it gets a little stubborn, you're just using small scissors. You don't need any special kind of scissors. You can even use the children's scissors that has the dull edge on it. Now with this you can make three different projects. One that we're going to do out of this that has to do with flowers is going to be you're going to cut right along this first rib and instead of using an exacto knife all I do is I squeeze it because this is very soft plastic. And I just kind of snip it right here, make it above that first ridge. You insert your scissors and then you cut all the way around. And it doesn't have to be completely even. While you're doing your cutting, I like to do all my cutting at one time for my preliminary projects. Then I'm also going to cut along this ridge. You do the same thing. Insert your scissors and then cut all the way around. We're going to save this for later. Now the project that we're going to be making again are these beautiful flowers. What you're going to do is very gently trim the edges. And it doesn't have to be completely straight. You just want to get those sharp burrs and edges off. So you're cutting horizontal. Now you're going to cut vertical. And over a period of time, once you get accustomed to cutting, you can cut all kind of patterns. Here I'm just going to cut a straight pattern. And when you fold them back, that's when the petals form. On this one, I'm going to have some little tiny pieces and some larger pieces. And when I say tiny, there's a little thin strip here. Then I'm going to fold this down. That's my big piece. And then I'm going to cut a little piece on the edge. So now I have three pieces. Two small ones, one big one. Then go to the next one. I'm going to fold it down and press. And you're just finger pressing these. Again, it's very pliable and very easy to do. Then I'm going to snip on the left side and then on the right side. And now I have two more little tiny strips and then a big strip. You're going to follow that pattern all the way around. So I'm going to cut here and cut here and fold it down. Then turn. And it's probably a little hard to see, but it's clear plastic. So you hold it up in the air so you can see. Make sure that you're not cutting your hand and fold it down. And then cut on the left side and cut on the right side. Now what I'm doing is I'm squeezing it down flat. And what that does, it creates a type of a spiral. So I, at this point, can paint my edges. This one I've cut, as you can see, I've cut strips all the way around in a daisy pattern. And I put a little Mod Podge and glitter mixed together so that when this dries, it's going to have a little sparkly sheen. When I painted it, I painted the back. And the reason I paint the back is so that the shiny side will show and I really don't have to put anything on it. This one, I painted the back. And as you can see, it's kind of a matte finish. I'm using acrylic paint but it's a matte finish so that 
when I turn on the other side, it actually appears to be shiny when actually the paint is underneath. And that makes all the difference in terms of how bright and sparkly. Here's a smaller one. And I'm going to show you how to cut this pattern using the bottom of the bottle. That was the first cut that we did. That looks like this. Each bottle, depending on the company, has a different shape. So you may get a different flower every time. This is another one. Water bottles, same size, same ounces, but the pattern at the bottom, that's what makes the difference. This one has multiples and this one doesn't. Here's the pattern that's on the bottom of this one. This is the pattern on the bottom of this one. It's these little ridges right here. And these little edges, I was able to accomplish that by cutting up the sides and then crimping them. So I'm going to pretend that I haven't done that one. So what I'm going to do, I think we'll cut this one. You can cut down as low as you want. As you can see, I'm cutting right along the edge. Just trimming it up. But I want a little bit of the lip to come over the edge. On this one, I cut right around the top. So I only had this part. But in this case, what I'm going to do is leave that little lip on there. And then I'm just going to cut toward the center and separate and cut toward the center, center and separate and then cut and separate and cut. And then I'm going to follow that pattern all the way around and you can choose to skip a couple of sections or you can cut all of them. It's entirely up to you. And then all I'm doing is just straightening out the little edges. So as you can see, I have these little extra pieces on the end. But my pattern is on the inside. You can use regular paint like I have here. Or you can use Sharpie markers. This is also standard black and uh, the black mark marker. But this one is a bronze color. And it's very, very nice to use on this surface because it is meant to be used on non-porous surfaces. That means it does not bleed through. You can, I think you can even paint on a stone if you needed to. But the colors are so fabulous, depending on what kind of set. You can get neon markers. Sharpie has all kinds of colors that you can use. This particular one just happens to be bronze. It almost looks gold colored. I have a set and I don't have any money in Sharpie. I'm just saying that they're useful. Even if it's a Sharpie-like brand, what you need something that is going to show up on a non porous surface. So whether, whatever brand you decide to go with, you want to make sure that it's a color that you can see. Now, obviously, if I put yellow on here, yellow is not going to show because it's a trans transparent color right here. So this is kind of a rose color. Let's see how that works. See, that comes out really, really nice. I'll put up against this white so you can see. And because this is a marker, it doesn't matter if you put this on the top or the bottom, it is still going to be shiny. When you're working with paint, you want to make sure that you paint on the back. Here's another one that I've cut out. And again, you can make any shape that you want with the petals. I made the little tiny cuts like I did with the other one and folded them. And this is the, uh, the middle of the flower and I paint it on top. So again, there's so many different ways that you can go with this. So when I come back, I'll show you how to do another flower.